Hi, my name is Aditi and today I'm going to tell you some really interesting facts about the Cannes Film Festival, the world's largest and most prestigious film festival. Yes, we all know that, nothing new. But did you know that it is the only event in the world which gets the second most amount of media coverage after the Olympics? That's crazy, isn't it? And you know what's even more crazy? A film festival of that scale welcomes everyone to participate. In fact, if you're a film design student, you don't even have to pay any participation fee. And if the jury members love your work, then you will not only be invited to attend this festival, but also take home a good prize money amount. Sounds too good to be true, but it's a fact. I'll tell you all of this and much more in today's video. First of all, let's start with the name. This is a little confusing. It's written as C-A-N-N-E-S, but we say it as just Can because it's a French name. Cannes is the name of the city, the resort city where this festival takes place. And this was started back in 1946. And up to 2003, this was called the International Film Festival. Recently, of course, we know it as the Cannes Film Festival. I'm sure you've uh, seen your favorite celebrities walking the red carpet and they're all going in some direction. And you must have wondered, right? Where are they going? <laughs> and what are they doing? And what happens in the film festival? In very simple words, this is like a gathering of um, all of these film professionals, film experts from all around the world, where they not only evaluate, but celebrate the best cinema in the world. Of course, there is screening of multiple films that happens throughout the day. There are many premieres that go on throughout the day. But this is not like any other theater experience where you walk in, you watch the film and you come out. This is like an interactive session. So when you watch the film, once it gets over, the makers of the film get an opportunity to talk about their work. Because people from all spheres of the film industry are present there, it's like a mega networking event as well. I'm not sure if you've noticed this, but the Cannes Festival is super traditional. And this is why they have a very strict dress code for their guests to follow. Men have to wear the classic suit and women have to wear a formal evening gown or a formal evening dress along with a pair of heels. What makes this festival so unique is the fact that big shot filmmakers and newcomers, literally students, are all invited to the same festival. There are various categories of competition that are hosted by the CAN. For example, there is a long feature film competition. Then there is a contest for short films. And then there's something separately designed for just design students. If you are studying films and you have some good piece of work with you, you have no reason to keep it to yourself because the eligibility criteria for this festival is literally the bare minimum. The film that you create has to be recent, original, needless to say, and it shouldn't be published anywhere in the world, including the internet. If your film is originally in English or French, you don't even need to add subtitles. And if you're a student, like I told you in the beginning of this video, you don't even have to pay any application fee. You just have to upload your work on their official website. And that's all. If the jury members love your work, which in some likelihood is obviously possible, and let's say you win the contest, you will get an opportunity to be invited for the festival. Your work will be screened and you will take home a prize money amount that is enough to buy you the best of equipments for your future film design projects. How awesome is that? Now, obviously, there are various categories of contests that you can take part in and win recognitions and awards and prize money. But everybody who sends in their work, including the big shot directors who send in their projects to this festival, have their eyes on the Palme d'Or or the Golden Palm, which is the highest honor you can receive at this event. In case you have 
a Sony Live um, subscription. You know that app Sony Live? If you have that subscription, you can check out the latest release, Triangle of Sadness, which was 2022's Golden Palm winner. But in case you're in mood of some retro inspiration, you can go to YouTube and you need to type in Nicha Nagar by Chetan Anand. And that film you see is not only the first Indian, but the first Asian film to win the Golden Palm Award back in the year 1946. So technically, we can say that uh, India's connection with the can was right from day one. In fact, this was just the beginning. After a couple of years, several Indian projects and films began to gain recognition and awards for their work. It started off with Do Bhiga Zameen, Boot Polish, Pathir Panchali, Gautama the Buddha, Kharij, Salam Bombay, Marana Simhasanam, Printed Rainbow, The Lunchbox, Masan, A Night of Knowing Nothing, and All That Breathes. And Indian filmmakers have not just had the privilege to be on the competition side, but have also be invited several times to be a part of the official jury. Vinal Sen was the first Indian, the first director to get this opportunity and later several successful Indian writers, actors were invited as well. Now there are a couple of celebrities that you must have spotted who are neither screening any of their films at the event and nor are they being a part of the jury for that particular year and yet you see them walking the red carpet so how does that work a grand film festival like Cannes obviously needs a lot of sponsors right so these international sponsors have brand ambassadors and most celebrities that you see who are neither, like I told you, screening their films, nor are they being a part of the jury, are actually faces of the brands that are sponsoring the event. With all of this information, you must be thinking, maybe this has something to do only with the film industry. It benefits only the film people. That's not true, actually. Of course, this has transformed lives of several people. Uh, there were directors who had a very humble beginning they send in their work to the can, got recognized, and that one event, that one opportunity changed their life forever. Of course, that's happened in the past, but a grand festival like can has a powerful cultural impact on the society as well. Remember I told you that there is a strict dress code for the guests to follow? Back in 2015, a couple of ladies, middle-aged ladies, were invited to walk the red carpet. They were part of a film that was screening at the event. But due to certain medical uh, restrictions, they weren't able to wear their heels, so they opted for flats instead. The organizers of the event denied their entry just because of the footwear. And this raised many questions in media on gender inequality. If you've ever worn heels in your life, then you know what I'm talking about. Feels glamorous, but it's never comfortable. The question is, why are uncomfortable beauty standards only applied to women? That's what the discussion was all about. So, multiple Hollywood actresses, to show their support for this, they walked the red carpet, that same red carpet, but they ditched their stilettos and then began to pose in front of the camera. This small gesture, of course, created a lot of buzz over the internet. So much so that it actually inspired women from all different industries, from all walks of life, to publicly post pictures of their feet in pain. There are several jobs, working environments where women are forced to comply to these uncomfortable standards. And if they don't, they are asked to go back home. These pictures, these questions, everything over the internet obviously gained a lot of momentum and sparked subtle changes in the society. Isn't that awesome? I hope this video was interesting for you to watch, something new you got to learn. If the answer is yes, Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. That really, really motivates me to come up with more and more content for you. In the meanwhile, if you have any questions, suggestions or feedback for me, you can write all of that in the comments and I'll try my best to get back as soon as possible. That's all I had for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching and have a lovely day ahead. Bye.